Learning Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 2037, Clean Data with Power Query. I am podcasting this entire book. Click that I in the top right hand corner to get to the playlist. All right, in the book, in the book, I said I wanted to just introduce Power Query. Now, Power Query is built in to Excel 2016 here under Get and Transform. But if you have 2010 or 2013, as long as you're running Windows and not Mac, uh, everything uh, that's here in Get and Transform, you can download for free from Microsoft from just search for download Power Query. And I'm interested in getting a file list today, right? I want to list all the files in a folder. Maybe I need to see which files are the large files, or I need to sort, or I need you know, to get a combination of you know, the budget files that we sent out, and then a different folder, which ones we came, came back with. All right, so something. And I pasted in a folder path there. I copied that from Windows Explorer. Click OK. And they show me this preview. I want to edit this. All right, and a couple of things here. You see that we have the file name, the extension, the data was accessed, modified, created, and then it's really not obvious that this symbol here, this attributes, there's more stuff in here. And if you click this symbol, uh, then I can go in and get things like file size or if it's read only and things like that. So in this case, I just want file size. Uh, we'll click OK. So I have attributes dot size. I can see how many bytes are in each one. All right, and maybe you know, maybe I don't need everything here. Maybe I don't need the date created, so I can right-click and say that I want to remove that column. All right, and this binary, I don't need that. We'll remove that column, and then just close and load, and it now gives me a sortable view of everything in that folder. If the folder changes, I can come in here and I can refresh the query and it will go back out and pull that data in, right? This is, uh, for me, this is a problem that we used to have all the time. We would send out 200 budget files and you get some of them back, not all of them back. You need to be able to compare. So now I can essentially do a VLOOKUP between folders, right? Just amazing how cool that is. Hey, but look, let's go beyond what I have in the book and show you how that's just the tip of the iceberg. All right, so I'm going to create another uh, query here, data, new query, from file, from folder. And I'll copy that folder path to here. Click Edit. Okay, now right here, October 2016, this next trick only works with CSV files. The day that this works with XLSX files, it'll be an amazing thing. Here I have a folder of a whole bunch of files, and I want to create one Excel grid with all of the data from all of these files. It's not intuitive, intuitive at all. These two down arrows pointing at the horizontal line, when I click that, bam, it just pulled in every single record from every single file in that folder. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that was a VBA macro before, and it takes months to learn VBA macros. You can learn Power Query in 10 minutes. All right, now a couple of things here. You see that the word customer product Jan Feb Mar is repeated multiple times because it was at the top of every single uh, every single file. So I'm going to take the top row, go to the Transform tab, and say Use First Row as Headers, which is going to replace Column 1, Column 2, Column 3 with these real headers. And then I'm going to open this filter drop down and say Remove Customer, and that'll get rid of all of the other headers from all of the other files, but keep the header from the first file. All right, then we have this outline view, right? In regular Excel, Control G, Special, Blanks, Equal, Up Arrow, Control Enter, Reselect the whole column, Control C, Alt E, S, V, Enter. All right. That was a lot of steps. It's still some steps. Now, it's still some work. We have to select this column, go to Replace Values, say that we're going to replace nothing with the word Null. Click OK. That'll give us nulls there. And then those nulls allow us to use this amazing command called Fill, Fill Down. Watch that column when I choose Fill Down. Bam, it just pulled in uh, all of that outline view and brought the value down a lot faster than the whole other set of steps. All right, the grand total I don't need, right click and remove. Now, 
right now at this point you say, oh yeah, hey, we could pull this in and it'd be awesome. But if we wanted to create a pivot table from this data, having a repeating group going across Jan, Feb, Mar is not a good format for a pivot table. Right now we have 47 rows. I need to have 47 times 12 rows. And to do this in a regular Excel file, it is horrendous using a multiple consolidation range uh, that I learned from uh, Mike Alexander at Datapig Technologies. But check this out. I'm going to choose the labels. These are the things that I don't want to change. And then say, unpivot the other columns. And we go from 47 rows to 564 rows. That's an amazing step. Here you can see that these are text. Easy enough to change it to either currency or a whole number. Right click, rename, and call it revenue. How about these months? They're all text. Here's an awesome way to fix that. We go to add column, add a custom column, doesn't matter what the name is, in quotes, 1, 2016, because they're all from 2016. Click OK. Now we have this new custom column. I'm going to take the attribute column, the month, and the 1, 2016, and say I want to merge those columns with a space in between and call it date. Click OK. All right, and that looks enough like a real date that when I go to transform and change it to a date, it converts it true to a true Excel date. And at this point, these two temporary columns, I can right click and remove. All right, now you're saying to yourself, well, Bill, we could have done all of this in Excel. And that's absolutely true. We could have done all of it in Excel. It would have been harder to get all the CSV files into one file. Um, it would have taken longer to fill in the blanks. It definitely would have taken longer to do the unpivot operation. Uh, but here's the thing. Look over on the right-hand side. We haven't talked about applied steps at all. This is like the world's greatest undo. If you need an audit trail, if the auditors come and say, well, how would you get from all these CSV files to this file that we're building our financial statements on? You can go back and show what it looked like at each step along the way. If you screwed something up back here, you could change or edit that step and close and load. All right, so here's our data set. This is based on all of the files in this folder. Let's build a little pivot table from here. Insert pivot table existing worksheet right here. And I'll put revenue in the values area products down the left hand side. You see that we have 6,0051. Well, that's today's data. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow, let's say that we get a couple of new customers, a couple of new files come along, and our IT department takes those and dumps them into our folder. All I have to do is reopen this file, select the query, come over here and refresh, and then come here, analyze, refresh the pivot table and we have the new data. It's faster on day one, maybe by a factor of 20-30%. On day two, it's faster by 99%. It's an absolutely amazing product. Power Query, it's in Excel 2016, but if you're in 10 or 13 for Windows, you're more than welcome to go out and download it for free. Well, and Every podcast in this series, I've asked you to buy this book, but today I'm not going to do that. Today, I think you should buy this book for Ken Poles and Miguel Escobar. M is for Data Monkey, a guide to the M language in Excel Power Query. This book will teach you everything about the Power Query interface. It's an amazing book, the best book on Power Query. Everything I learned, I learned from this book. Click the I in the top right hand corner uh, to get to a place where you can buy this book. Uh, it will have, uh, honestly, on a flight from Orlando to Dallas, I read the whole book and uh, my knowledge of Power Query just soared. In two hours, you can be up to speed and replace things that you would have had a use to have done with VBA. All right, so Power Query tools, they're already built into Excel 2016, but you can get them for free from 2010 and 2013. Uh, my first example and the example from the book was list all files from a folder into the Excel grid, choose new query from file from folder not obvious that attribute field you have to expand it to find the file size.
But then the second trick that I showed, if your data is in CSV files, you can import all of the files at once into a single grid. Promote the heading row, delete the remaining header rows, uh, replace the blanks with null, fill down, get rid of the grand total column, and then the amazing unpivot the data, unpivot other columns. Uh, and then we use the formula to convert month names into dates. Uh, they have that complete list of steps on the right hand side, the world's greatest undo. And the next day, when you have to do it all over again, just click the refresh button. In fact, in fact, if you're too lazy, too lazy to click the refresh button, you come out here under data, connections, properties, and say that every time I open this book, just go this workbook, go do the exact same thing. All right, uh, you know, if, if you don't, if clicking refresh is too much of a hassle, which is ridiculous. Um, but you can have it set up that every time you open the workbook, it just goes out to that folder, pulls everything in, and uh, you'll just have to refresh the pivot table here. Uh, Power Query, absolutely amazing, amazing tool.